I'm Matthew Burchette, and this is Curator on the Loose. Ever since there's been aviation, there've been, well, incidences. And when something like that happens, you need something like this, a fire truck. Now, admittedly, they didn't have a truck like this when the Wright brothers made their first flight, but as aviation got more and more advanced, so did aviation firefighting. The techniques and the equipment are outstanding. And I love the fact that we, the Museum of Flight, have such an amazing piece of equipment. We're up here at our Restoration and Reserve Center. That's at Payne Field. That's where we keep a lot of our planes that you guys don't see, which explains why you've never seen this before and why we're here today. Check it out. This is awesome. I love this thing. It's a 1942 Kenworth fire truck, and it was built right here in Seattle. How cool is that? Even cooler is that it served on Boeing Field at plant number two. And if you don't know what plant number two is, that was their main production facility for B-17 bombers in World War II. And it was just about a mile up the road from where the Museum of Flight is today. How cool is that? Look at this thing, it's amazing. This was top of the line in 1942. And this guy served a really long time at Boeing Field until we got a hold of it and restored it. But you know what it does is it makes me wonder how has the technology changed from 1942 to today. I think we need to go down to Boeing Field and hang out with the ARFs. No, not dogs. The aircraft rescue firefighters that work there. But first. Kirk, tell us a little bit about yourself and where are we now? Well, we are here at the uh, airport police and fire station for King County International Airport. So um, I'm a 20 year retired military and from there I got hired on with the sheriff's office and I've now been with the sheriff's office 22 years. Uh, the last 12 of those have been right here at this assignment. Um, I chose this assignment because being retired Air Force, I'm familiar with airports, and this is like <laughs> being right here at home. Kind of like being home. Yep. Now, I know what you're thinking back there. He said, Sheriff, tell us a little bit about this. You guys are not only firefighters, you're also sheriff's deputies. Correct. We are a, a multifunctional unit here, specialized in not only police, but also firefighting and uh, emergency medical services. Wow, you get a little bit of everything. Yep. Yep, we do, a little bit of everything. So Kirk, can you take us around to the inside of the station, kind of show us what's what's in there? Absolutely, let's That's start great. upstairs. Yeah. Oh, the, hey, this is a great view. Yeah, gives us a majority view of the entire airport from here. So we can kind of see what's happening. Sometimes we can even identify a problem before we get notified by the control tower. So let's take a hypothetical. There is a big MD-11 and it's UPS that comes in here and that's a big plane. So if this guy comes in and he radios ahead that he's got a problem, are you just rolling one truck? Are you gonna roll both of them? Are you gonna call in assets? Or does it kind of depend on, you know, what you're hearing over the radio? Yeah, it will depend upon what uh, the pilot is reporting to the control tower and what they uh, funnel down to us. Um, so if it's anything that has to deal with uh, the operational aspects of the aircraft, that's significant. So in that particular case, then yes, we will all respond. We will also uh, give it the identifier for the uh, county dispatch to let them know what other resources to send. So we'll probably get 
like three fire trucks and a couple battalion chiefs from outside that will come. Uh, if the aircraft lands safely without any problem, then we go ahead and uh, release them so they can go handle other calls and okay. we'll deal with that ourselves. Can we go check out the rigs? I have been dying to look at those things since we got here. Sure, let's go downstairs. Awesome. So Firefighter Reigns, before we check out the trucks, can we look at some of the, what you guys call bunker gear? Sure, yep. So this is my little cubby here. So as you can see, we each have a little cubby. That's where we keep our uh, bunker gear or our police gear as well when we are on duty. So this is mine. So as you can see, I have my coat. So it's a heavy Kevlar type material. Uh, we have an inner liner that goes with the uh, outer liner as well. And that's helped to create a barrier to keep kind of air barrier. So that kind of keeps okay. the heat away from you. So I got my coat. I'll let you hold that. Right. I'm gonna put this on. You mind? No, nope, go ahead. That's sweet. And then I have my helmet. So this here, we have uh, two different styles. You kind of have your traditional uh, fire helmet, and then this is more of a European style. Yeah, no kidding. It's so, almost like a motorcycle helmet. Yeah, kind of like a motorcycle helmet. Um, what it does for us is uh, inside aircraft is pretty tight quarters. So with the traditional helmet, you got that big brim that goes around. Yeah. So and it gets easy to get caught on things. And uh, this kind of helps reduce that. Uh, has a couple shields there. We have a eye shield, and then we have a full face shield as well. Cool. That's so, really cool. Yep. And then with that, I have my mask for uh, putting on our air tank. Just kind of put it on, hook in, and you can breathe uh, compressed air so that you're not breathing the hot gases and things like that when you're inside a fire environment. So you're not breathing oxygen, you're literally breathing just compressed air. Just compressed air. Okay. Now, can you refill your, your tanks here on site? Yes, we do have what we call a cascade unit oh. uh, in another room there. And um, it's just like a air tank that the uh, sky, um, scuba divers have as oh. well. And uh, cool. we'll do that. As a matter of fact, the sheriff's uh, marine unit their divers will come here from time to time and uh, use our system to oh, nice. fill their air tanks. So, And then the other part, the lower part is we have our, my bunker gear, my bunker pants. We've got our heavy duty boots and the pants go along with it. Pants are set up very similar to the uh, coat as well, double lined, same type of materials. And then of course, big pockets where I have other items in there that I might need. So what about gloves? Obviously you don't want to be running around with just regular old hands out there. Sure. So in your pockets oh. there of the coat, you will find uh, the gloves that I have. Oh, all right. Again, they're kind of heavy duty, Whoa. insulated type gloves. Um, yeah, I'm not going to be dialing a phone with these. Nope, nope. You don't have any fine motor skills associated Holy with cow. those. It's strictly gross motor skills and uh, very distinctive hand movements that you got to do. Yeah, no kidding. In so, that environment. Awesome. All right, behind me is what you guys are calling an SCBA. And I know this just because I know this self contained breathing apparatus. You're very good. Yes. We Score do have openings. You want a job? Uh, that's about as far as my knowledge goes. All righty. <laughs> um, can I try this thing on? Sure. Yep. Let me help you out here. It is pretty heavy. So what's the average weight of this thing? Could be 20 pounds easily. So All right. What you want to so do then is uh, grab hold of the... Uh, the uh, shoulder straps there and pull down as I help pull up. Okay, right. yeah, that's better. Yeah. So the air tank that you have behind you, it's a uh, 4,500 pound pressured tank. Uh, theoretically, it's good for 45 minutes worth of air, but that all depends on the individual themselves and how hard they're breathing. Yeah. 
the harder you're breathing, the faster you're breathing, the quicker you use up your air. So it could go even below that. You could go 30 minutes. Some guys maybe only 20 minutes, depending on how hard they're breathing. So physical fitness is a very important part yeah, of this no job. So what's all of this? Obviously, that's probably my gauge for the tank. Correct. But this is, this is more than a gauge, I'm thinking. Yes. So this here is what we call a pass device. So here you can see there's a dial here that shows uh, where uh, the air pressure is within your, your air tank there. Uh, if you run into an emergency, you hit the red button there and that sounds an alarm. And then also too, we have in here a, uh, a thermal imager for no detecting kidding. heat. So that's what this is for here and it can be displayed on this screen down here too. So you can try to locate a fire or even try to locate a person if it's like Just a Just from this unit alone. Correct. Wow, that is wild. Yep. Man. So this is the uh, radio mic and speaker. Oh, okay. So uh, Big our, buttons, good. Yeah, so our radios, it's a Bluetooth connection with our radios and uh, we can then, um, uh, talk through our, as well as through our uh, masks as well. So we can talk and be able to hear each other a whole lot better than just trying to hear the muffledness of what the masks used to be like. No kidding. So, all right, say the worst happens and a firefighter goes down. How do you find them in the midst of all that crazy? Okay, so we have, like I could say, the emergency button there. You would press that and it will sound an alarm. So I'll go ahead and turn it on here for you. And so what's happening now is the system is doing a check. And then if you have that emergency, I'm gonna go ahead and press this here and it's gonna sound a very large alarm. Wow. So that's what we are hearing, and when the rescue team comes in, that's what they're trying to listen to and to help steer them to where you might be located at. Okay, so what happens if I'm incapacitated and I can't physically get to the button? So if you're not moving or anything like that, uh, it's self-regulated that if there's no, detects no movement within 30 seconds, it will automatically sound the alarm all by itself and, uh, and then if anybody was to hear that, then they would call out what was so, on May Day. So this is smart enough that I... Just like oh, that. Oh, like that. Yep. Perfect timing. Now, if you, now, how do I turn it off? Do I just kind of... So I kind of do the shake, the shuffle. I'm, a, I'm alive, I'm alive. Yeah, you can do that, shake it with your hand, or double tap the uh, green buttons here. That is really cool. Man, you guys have come a long way from when I was watching Emergency in like, well, never mind when I was watching it, but <laughs> a long time. I know ago. that show. Yeah, <laughs> that's really cool. Mm -hmm. So Firefighter Reigns, this is your baby truck. This monster right here is the smaller of the two. Mm -hmm. What is this? So this is why we are here. <laughs> this here is the Striker uh, 1500, which represents how many gallons of water we have in this particular truck. We have each truck uh, set up the same. Uh, the left side of the truck is all of our outside firefighting equipment. That's where we have our hoses and our nozzles and our control panel okay. to run the, the water pump and things of that nature. On the right side like this is all of our tools and other uh, equipment that we may need to use, such as spreaders, cutters, circular saws, uh, an exhaust fan. So what makes this rig so much different than like just a regular structure fire department kind of truck? So these trucks are specifically designed for aircraft rescue firefighting purposes, uh, operating at an airport. Uh, these trucks are designed that one person can operate the fire suppression system within the truck all by himself wow. from inside the truck. And uh, also too, it just has its layout is a little bit different than uh, a structural truck. We carry all of our agent needs uh, in the truck itself while a structural truck may have just a limited amount of water with it and just some barrels of uh, 
concentrated foam if they need to make a foam solution. So now one of the things that I'm noticing here is this big nozzle looking thing on the front. That's certainly not standard issue for like Seattle FD. What's going on with that? So that's for piercing the aircraft. And if you want, I can pull the truck out and uh, kind of show you how it operates. Yes, please. Let's do it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> So, it's obvious you guys have used this before. Yep, this is our training prop. Um, call it a pass device. And uh, it's designed to let us practice using our piercing nozzle. Okay. And uh, this nozzle boom to uh, get practice. Obviously, we can't go to an aircraft and start po poking holes in it there. Uh, the owners are- Yeah, Boeing are would frown little, upon that. Get a little upset, so. And you can do all of that from right here. Yes, all this, like I said, operated by one person and uh, I can kind of give you a demonstration. Yeah, right? can we punch a hole in this thing? Sure, <laughs> let's give it a shot. <laughs> oh, nice. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do is set out the uh, piercing tip. And I want to try to keep it level with the boom arm as much as possible. That gives us the most strength to be able oh, to yeah. pierce into an aircraft. How thick is that metal? Uh, I couldn't tell you how many millimeters it is, but it's not like aluminum foil. Yeah, no kidding. And it's a little heavier, thicker than like sheet metal. But that's the side of an aircraft. That's amazing. So in this particular case, I wanna go ahead and I wanna raise it up a little bit. So I'm readjusting the elbow that's behind us here on it. And then I'll bring it down a little bit. So I'm going to try to eyeball a spot that I want to try to do a pierce at. And let's move it over here a little bit. And then in this case, I want to go ahead and extend it. Kind of give me an idea where I'm going. So I need to bring it down a little bit more. Well, that's where I'm gonna go in at. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and, there we go. Wow. And I wanna go fully extended into it and then I would turn on the water and get that pattern that kind of goes out inside. out. Dang. <laughs> and adjust to where you need to go next. All right. Wow, that is really cool. So maybe, hey, we'll take it down and uh, I'll show you some other capabilities of it on uh, some aircraft wings we got down Ooh, at the other end. Yeah, yeah, that would be really cool. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. So 
Okay, you want to see what uh, these nozzles can do here a little bit? Yeah, that would be awesome. All right, so I'm going to start with the bumper turret. So just kind of give you an idea what kind of reach we got. I'm going to push it out this way. So you can easily probably get about 50 feet out there. Yeah, no kidding. You know, the uh, boom can also provide an opportunity to not only do the raise and the lower, but if I wanted to just extend the reach, I just extend it straight out and until I can't go any further and it will be able to, I can hit the fire a lot sooner without having to get close to it if I needed to. But it will actually get way, way low there oh, yeah. for us. And that way then I can get underneath an aircraft if I need to. I can push it up, spray water up into the landing gear area where it retracts. That's where a lot of the avionics are for oh, the aircraft. Okay. Or if there's a hot brake issue oh, with yeah. the wheels, we can get real close to that as well and uh, get water or foam on it. That's amazing. All right, so let me spray a little water here. Let's kind of see what that looks like. So you can see how that would be if I wanted to get up inside a landing gear by area. Yeah. Just get all that area up in there as quickly as possible. All right, you want to see a little pump and roll action? Yeah. All right. What's a pump and roll? Pump Sounds and like roll something is, we're going to do for football. Yeah, pump and roll is where I can drive the truck at the same time with spraying water. All right. All right. Let's go do it. All right. So we're going to do a little pump and roll. And again, like I said, it's it's designed that we can drive and operate at the same time. So theoretically, if I'm coming in and I want to attack a fire, I can get down, come in about this speed, flip on the water. And so you would use this to, like you were saying, push that burning fuel away, yep. get closer to the aircraft. That is really amazing. So with that, uh, let's go ahead and I'll show you our booster line and uh, we'll Ooh, have my yeah. partner uh, demonstrate uh, what we can do pulling it from the truck, side of the truck, and uh, how we can use that oh, yeah. as well. Yeah. That was pushing me back. This is just a booster reel. The other ones are better worse. Oh my god. Yes. Oh, bucket list. Check. Right there. As much as I don't want to, it is time to leave. But we have had an amazing day out here with the ARFs at King County International Airport. Thank you so much to Sergeant Herman and to Firefighter Rains for letting us do all the stuff that we did and showing us this amazing equipment. And thank you guys seriously for everything you do for us, not only out here at King County, but as when you, when you don your sheriff's apparel as well. You guys are great and we love you. Tune in next time. Well, we don't know what next time is gonna be because we're curator on the loose, but it's gonna be cool. Nicely done. That was cool.